Good morning, y'all. I'm Marlene Bush, and this is Stitching by the Lake. Today is September 21st, and it is hotter than blue blazes out there. I swear, y'all. I know fall is coming, um, but I'm ready for it to hurry just a little bit more. We're going to be up to 99 today. We were yesterday as well. Tomorrow, I think it's going to drop a little bit. Our leaves are beginning to turn, but it's not because it's fall. It's because we are in the middle of a drought. We have not had rain in a long time, and it's going to be, I don't know, another week or 10 days probably before we get another rain. So the trees and the shrubs are sh very stressed, just stressed enough that they are, their leaves are turning yellow and uh, beginning to drop some. Uh, that's not a good thing. I'm having to water my shrubs and my uh, flowers uh, every other day. I probably should do it every day, but I'm afraid my husband might uh, not. Um, well, I started to say he might have a heart attack. That's a whole other story. Uh, I'm going to tell you all in just a minute. Um, the water bill gets pretty high when I water every day, so he tends to frown at me a little bit when that happens. He does not uh, get angry. He really doesn't. He just kind of frowns sometimes. And I'm laughing because of the heart attack part. I can't believe I started to say that. He has not had a heart attack. But we are in the middle of a long journey um, with some heart issues for him. Started back, um, gosh, in June, I told his primary care physician I thought something was going on. We started August the 10th with a cardiologist, and he's done several visits there and he's had the nuclear stress test which he flunked um then he had a cardiac cath which he also flunked he has three pretty significant blockages and we're seeing a surgeon tomorrow and he will probably be having a triple bypass early next week um so it was kind of ironic that that came to my mind when I, you know how you say that all the time, he had a heart attack. Well, he didn't really have a heart attack, but we're going to try to prevent that. Um, and so this has been a very stressful time. We've, uh, I've not videoed for a little while because frankly, I just couldn't get my head wrapped around it. I couldn't think about uh, this stuff when I was trying to figure out how to get him in quicker to the cardiologist and the cardiac surgeon and all that stuff. Anyway, forget all of that. That's my life update, I guess. Um, I have, since I saw you all last, gone to a retreat. I went to Quilter Station in Independence, Missouri and had the best time ever. I'm not going to show you all those projects and things until the end of this video because I know that several people have already done a recap of that, and if you've already seen one, you're not going to see anything different here. Uh, you might want to skip that part, so I'll put that on the end and, and give you that option. When I started thinking about making this video, uh, I thought, geez, it's been over a month, and I've had all this other stuff on my mind, and I don't know what I'm going to say. I need to sit down and make some notes, and so I did, and there are my notes, y'all. The date. The date. That's as far as I got with that. So this is just going to be crazy. It's just going to be one of those, I'm going to tell you about whatever I lay hands on first, and go from there, uh, and hope that I remember everything I want to tell you. Um, I'm going to start off with a couple of things that I have finished since the last time I saw you. I haven't finished much, but I have stitched on quite a few things. So I have a pretty good stack of whips over here. And then um, once I've done that, I will, I'm looking around to see what else I've got over here. Uh, I'll talk about the retreat and what we did and the wonderful time that I had. I, um, I've i got a, a little bit of a mess going on in here that you all can't see. This is also canning season for me. This is when I like to do most of my canning. I don't have a garden, and so what I can is just by chance a lot of times. I did can um, potatoes last week, about 15 pounds of potatoes, and I have 
uh, one more batch about half that size that I'm going to can. Um, I don't know, maybe this weekend. And over here on my cutting table is a box of apples. So I'm going to make apple pie filling probably tomorrow morning. Um, that's pretty much, that kind of stuff is taking up my time. I've started back walking, which is a good thing. I walk about 45 minutes in the morning. Try to go really early while it's a little bit cooler, and that's another reason why I'm looking forward to the cooler days. Um, and honestly, that's it. I, I stitch and do normal stuff, and I haven't done, other than the retreat, I haven't done anything um, beyond seeing my children. Went to a couple of my son's ball games. Uh, he's a coach. I think I've told you all that before. Uh, so it's been kind of a quiet end of summer kind of deal for us. We're back to staying at home again uh, for the most part because of Jerry's upcoming surgery. We have COVID numbers rising here. Um, some in our Sunday school class, in the class next door to us, in my prayer group. Um, so, you know, that cuts out church and, and those kind of small groups, groups that so fulfill you, you know, when you get to meet my, my, I'm not going to my Bible study class, and I miss those times. Um, I have masked up and done all that kind of stuff to run a couple of errands that I needed to run, um, but other than that, we are just hanging out here. I think Jerry's getting a little restless. He's not one to go. He doesn't uh, get out much, but he does miss the things that he normally does, so I'll be glad when he's able to get back to that. Okay, let's move forward because I don't want this video to be a great long one. Um, it takes forever to upload. Uh, but I do want to say first thank you. A couple of you have messaged me or emailed me to ask how I'm doing and if everything's okay because I've been away. Uh, and so yes, I'm fine. Uh, just taking care of my husband. We met in February of 1964 and married October 7th. So we have um, an anniversary coming up. 58 years we will have been married. Y'all, I don't even, most days I don't even feel like I'm 58 years old. So I don't know how I got to be married that long. Um, but life happens. It just, it just does. Let's look at a couple of things I have finished. Um, and one thing that I forgot to show y'all last time, or two, one or two things. Y'all know I forget all the time. I participated in Cindy's Cross Stitch Christmas Ornament Exchange. And last time I was going to show y'all the ornament that I received, and I couldn't find it. And it, it was right there in front of me. I don't know why I couldn't find it. But I uh, received this from Lisa Calhoun. Lisa is in Fort Myers, Florida. And this is the ornament that I got from her. I just love it. Look at this, y'all. This is a, you probably can't see it, but it's a sparkly fabric. It has a gold thread running through it. And it, um, when you can see it in person, you can see that sparkle. I'm looking forward to having this out at Christmas. I think I will probably hang it. Sometimes I hang ornaments like this, like on a uh, knob to, on one of my end tables or somewhere like that, rather than on the tree. Um, so that's probably what I'm going to do with this one, because that way I can see it a lot better. It gets hidden sometimes in the tree. And also, when we were in Tulsa, we were given... Uh, a little kit. I think this one came from Sampler's Not Forgotten. Anyway, it was to make this little strawberry, and I and I made that. I love making strawberries, and in fact, that's on my list for today. I've got some really pretty fall fabric that I want to make some big strawberries, like this big strawberries. I have one that I made last year, and I just love having it out. I, I did get my fall decorations out, or at least most of them. I, there are a couple of things that I'm remembering that should be in there that are not. 
So I think I must have one more box out in the storage building. But I'm not going out there today because it's too blooming hot. Um, then in um, Tulsa at that retreat back in July, Paulette Stewart, one of the things Paulette gave us was this pattern. This is my working copy. I've already passed this pattern on. to uh, I've gifted it to someone else. So this is the pattern that she gave us. And we, uh, it came with the threads and the fabric. And um, I have, I stitch when, when I stitch it with a hook. And so when, when I'm not sure how close it's going to be or if the hook, I can't get it on the hook good, I sew fabric to the edges. So that's what you're seeing here. And this is the pattern. I mean the stitched piece right here. This, um, let me hold it up here and then I'll go back to the pattern. I loved stitching it. It was very quick. And she shows it as a pin roll. And I think that's probably what I will do. I kind of wanted to do a drum. However, it's so small. I mean, it's so short. And if you turned it into a drum, it would be big around, like this big around, but only this tall. So I'm not sure that it would work. So a pin roll is probably what I'm going to do with that one. And that's going to go over in my to-be-finished pile, which is not very big, but it's bigger than I feel comfortable with. Then the other, I only finished two, so this is the other one. This pattern was gifted to me by my friend Judy in Tulsa. Um, this pattern has been released, I believe, but it was a pattern that was stitched at a retreat in Tulsa, not one that I attended. Um, but anyway, Judy gave me this pattern. It's from the Scarlet House, and it's called Gathering Together. I do not have that tray, and it would not matter because I didn't stitch it on the right size fabric. This called for 36 count fabric to fit in this tray, and I believe that I did a 32. For this one it's a let me look flax oh no it's a 28 um, 28 count flax and this is how that turned out such a pretty piece I don't know how I'm gonna finish this one uh, I could frame it, of course. I'm running out of space for framed pieces, but I'm also running around, off, running around, running out of space on tabletops uh, and places like that to display. So, man, if y'all have any ideas about other ways to display, um, I could, I could do um, a flat fold, but again, that needs to be able to have a place to sit, and I just don't have a lot of that. I, I do want to point out that this center of the flower right here, um, that's exactly as she designed it. But to me, it looks like this center is a B, which since my last name is Bush, I'm going to pretend that it is because I get to do that. <laughs> Okay, let's look at some whips. And there's a good size stack of these. I found this pattern in Just Cross Stitch Magazine. Let me see if I can find the issue number. I don't have it right here, but if you need it, um, 
It's one of the Halloween editions. Here's the picture right here. It's called Pepper La Chat, and it's designed by L.S. Porter. This is what it looks like. I didn't, uh, this is my working copy, and I didn't copy it in color. But that's what the pattern looks like. I decided I wanted to make several of these to give us gifts. I thought my great-grandchildren would probably like one made into a little ornament. Um, so I have finished the stitching on three of these um, and have a, a fourth one outlined. I have four great-grandchildren, but I'll show you this one. This is uh, Nutmeg. The fabric is called Nutmeg. And I don't see the count. I think it's 32. Uh, and that color is not anywhere near what color this really is. Um, it, this is more of a gold. It's showing up as more of a green right there. But it's actually more of a gold. Let me back up. There, that's a little bit closer. It definitely has a lot of green to it. But it's also much more gold than what's showing right there. Um, I'm going to make these into um, small little hanging pin pillows. Something with a little cord that the children could hang if they wanted to on their doorknob or something like that. Then I worked on Hannah Carter. This is a Shakespeare's Peddler pattern, and it looks like this. The stitch count on this is 208 by 255. So it's pretty big, but it's not huge. It called for a 30 count creme brulee. And since I made no notes, I'm not sure I can tell you what I'm stitching it on, but I'll look and see if it's still on here. Yeah, I can. A 32 uh, vintage gray. I'm using a Gloriana thread. Um, called Aubergine, and it's almost black, but it's got a purple, purple tint to it, which you can't see at all. Um, since the last time you saw this one, I have finished all of this section right here. I'm not quite halfway through, but I think that the bottom half is probably going to be faster than this top part has been. Um, this is an easy stitch. And, got, and letters, to me, stitch up pretty quickly. So I am, I finished from here up. Now, I have these, um, this, these rows, four rows more of letters, and then the verse, and a couple of little motifs. So, not too bad. Close to half, really. Um, I'd really like to get going and get that one completed. I think I've been thinking about what I'm going to do over the next few months. Since Jerry's going to have surgery, we are definitely going to be here in the house for a while. So I expect to get a good bit of stitching done. I would like to do to finish some whips for sure. And the ones like that that I think you know that I could do in a week uh, or two, I will choose those first. I don't have that many whips. I have about 22 maybe, something like that. It's been a little while since I went through them. Okay, this is a new start. I bought this pattern. It's a Jardin Privé 
sampler of my grandma several years ago at Branson at the stitch shop in Branson. Uh, what is the name of that? Oh, no, y'all are yelling at me. Can't think of it right now. Um, there used to be more than one there, but there really is only one now. They had this model up on the wall, and I looked at it, and I thought, how wonderful. How wonderful. Let me read this to you. A little lass sat in the angle nook with needle in hand and an earnest look, working away like the busiest bee, counting her stitches, one, two, three, sorting the colors bright and gay as she trilled a tune in a happy way. What are you doing, dear, I said, up flashed the pretty golden head. As the wee maid dimpled and answered me, why, I'm making a sampler, don't you see? And I wouldn't wonder a bit some day if a sweet little girl might feel proud to say that was made a long, long while ago by my own great-grandma, me, you know. This, um, the verse will go quickly. And the, the vine around the outside is not an elaborate one, but it will take some time. The colors are pastels mostly, although there are several dark ones in here. This is what they look like. They are all DMC, by the way. So they are all on these little floss things. This fabric, I don't remember what it is, um, but it's very stiff. It's not the most fun to stitch on, but it is the fabric they used on the model, and since the model is what I fell in love with, that's what I bought. I started in the center, and this is where I am on that one. I don't think that this is the called for fabric um, because it called for 28 count lamb's wool. Maybe it is lamb's wool. Oh no, wait, here it is. It is lamb's wool. 28 count lamb's wool. There you go. Who knew? But I think that border is so pretty, so sweet. And it's, it's uh, very pretty on this fabric. I am putting these away as I go, y'all, because if I don't, it would not be pretty. Okay, Winter Rose Manor. I took this one to, this is a Brenda Gervais pattern. I took this one to the quilter station retreat and worked on it. Y'all know how much you get to work on things at a retreat. Not a lot, but I was prepared for that. I just did some fill-in on the house. I did end up, I, we talked about this on an earlier video, I did end up changing the color to cherub. I'll show you what it looks like. It's a weak style works color. It's got a slight variegation to it and it's showing up very nicely on this fabric which is an unknown fabric a 36 count but an unknown color. At first I thought it was straw but I don't think it's dark enough to be straw so it could be parchment I don't know. Mystery. It's a mystery fabric. I think that I started this one since my last video. This is another 
Brenda Gervais, and I'm going right back to this one. This is going to be probably what I work on for the next few days. Um, be ye thankful. Yeah. I've seen several people stitching this one lately. Really like it. And I have just a very small start on it. Um, this is another mystery sampler. It's a 32 count, but that's really all that I know. And that's all that I've gotten done. And if you compare that to the pattern, just that little corner right up there. I'm anxious to get to the house. I love that house. I love the roof on it. Look at the roof on that, y'all. Don't you love that? I should count sometime how many times I say love in a video that I make. <laughs> a few. A few. But I'm just a very passionate person. That's what I tell everybody. I love everything. Okay, back to the Primitive Hairs Spooky Countdown. I would love to think I could finish this one by Halloween, but I doubt it. Because, <laughs> here's where I am on it. Not that far along. I'll, now these little individual things are pretty quick. They really are. And I think I did this. I don't know. Maybe I did all three of those since the last time you saw it. I just don't remember. I don't know how people who make videos can hold something up and say, Oh, I had only gotten this far last time I saw y'all. I can't remember that stuff. I blame everything on my age, of course. Y'all know that. But still, I don't think I could have done that before I got to be this old. And then my last whip is Autumn at Hawk Run Hollow. So, you know, it's really time for me to work on all of these again. Love, love, love this. I'm not stitching every one of those. I'm kind of deciding as I go. I know I'm not going to stitch the Halloween ones. I'd like to stitch those, but I'd like to stitch those as individual patterns. So, as I go, I will decide which, which ones get my attention. I had finished the top um, banner, and since then I have started on the house, the checkerboard house. That's what I've worked on. Love this piece. And it wouldn't bother me to just stitch on it till it was done, except that I have so many other things that I want to stitch on till they're done. But I can't manage that. Okay, now I am ready to start on the retreat and those kind of things. Before I do that, I want to mention one other thing. I got a gift a couple of weeks ago from my sweet friend Barbara, and um, I had sent her a little gift. So she sent me a thank you card. I want y'all to see the card. Look at that. Love those flowers. She made me this little floss bed. That's what I call them. And included a couple of beautiful pins. That was so sweet. Very unnecessary, but very sweet. So thank you, Barbara. I will treasure that and will use it. Uh, that's usually a sign of treasuring, isn't it? Okay. The retreat. Um... It was my first time for a quilter's um, station retreat. She had had two more, I think, before this one. She's having two a year, one in April and one in September. 
and it was so wonderful that I have already signed up for the April one and recruited my sister, Sherry, to go with me, and uh, a f my friend, Kim, is going to go with us as well. So um, it was just the fellowship was awesome. It was just awesome. You know, I, I realized that I haven't had not um, gotten out of lo a lot in the last couple of years. I did go to Tulsa to a retreat in July. But these were some people that I met years ago at other retreats and haven't seen since before COVID. Um, several of these people are people that I met at um, Farm Girl Dry Goods retreats uh, in Minneapolis and in Amana. And, um, you know, there's this thing about stitchers, and I'm sure it's true of other groups, but there are people that you just seem to bond with. Just It just happens. And so um, it was kind of like a family reunion for me to see people that I had not seen in a good while. Um, my friend Kay, who was so, so sweet and helpful to me, and uh, Christine from Hollis Hands Creates that I'd seen in Tulsa. I got to sit with her. Carol Saltbox Stitcher had not seen Carol since Amana, the last time I went to Amana. Um, those retreats up there are so fun, but they are a little bit far for me. Um, I don't fly well anymore because I have bad arthritis, and it's very uncomfortable for me to fly. When I can drive it in a day, I'm good. But Amana's like two days away. Uh, so that's a little harder for me. I don't, I want to go back to Amana. I really, I loved Amana. I thought it was the most beautiful place ever in the fall. So I really want to do that, but I don't know if I'm going to get that opportunity. So it was good to see um, and connect with um, some of those people, Roberta, Roberta. Uh, the sable stitchers, uh, just so many. I'll, I'll think of others as I go along. But um, I'm going to show you projects and talk about things as we go, even though you've probably seen all of these. That's okay. This bag that Rita gave us is pretty nigh on to being the most perfect bag. It is a, it's lightweight, but... Um, heavy. <laughs> that doesn't make a lick of sense, y'all. Um, it doesn't weigh a lot, but it is sturdy. That's a better word. Sturdy. Um, and I absolutely love it. It will be a go-to bag for me, for sure. Nothing that I show you is going to be in order, because I put it all in this little box sort of thing that I have here to keep it in so that I wouldn't get into it between the time I got home and the time I came to show y'all. Years ago when I started videoing, McKenna told me that I couldn't use anything that I got until I showed it to y'all first. I think she imprinted that on my brain. So I've tried not to. Um, Sometimes I have to sneak around, though, if it's just too much for me and I need it. <laughs> okay, Liz Matthews, what a delight. Well, I've, I have not ever seen Liz before, and she was precious, and I loved meeting her. She gave us this pattern, which is uh, what she called a vanity sampler, and... She calls it that because the lady who stitched it cut all of this piece out right here that had her name and her age and her date. She obviously got a little bit older before she got married, and she didn't want anybody to know how old she was. It's beautiful. It's uh, The colors in it are just wonderful. And Liz also gave us a kit. She pulled some of the motifs out of that sampler, to make these little smaller pieces and she gave us the fabric and the threads for that and a hoop and needles and um, 
thread holder. So this one is ready to go, and I'm anxious to stitch one of those. I love the colors on that. I realize there's plastic on these, but y'all, I just can't undo all of them. But aren't those sweet colors? It's kind of like a colonial blue to me, and a beautiful gold, and a green. The green is... Um, I don't even know what these threads are. They may just be DMCs, and I, because I only see numbers, I'm not seeing names. So I bet that's what it is. I bet they're DMCs. And she even gave us the stuffing for the little pillow when we get it made. She also brought a bunch of gifts. I don't know, 25 or so, and had little raffle tickets. I did not win one of those. But I thought that was fun. Alma Allen came one morning and gave us this out of, I think this is out of print, uh, this pattern. That's one of the loose feathers. It's called With My Needle. I did not have this pattern, so I was thrilled to get it. And she also gave us this sweet little notebook with the quilt pattern on it. It's a Blackbird design one uh, for making notes. It's just a little journal type book. And then this one I'm going to take out. It's in two different plastic bags. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take this out. Of that one. This sampler is called Moments of Glad Grace. And this is what it looks like if you have not seen it. Okay. I'm trying to be mindful of how long I hold these up here. The fabric she gave us is a 36 count legacy. These are the floss tags that we were given. I've already put my threads on those. This is what the colors of the threads look like. I'm trying to hold them up against my shirt. They ought to show up pretty good there. And then, let's see, what is this? We got so many things that I have forgotten some. Oh, this is the pattern. She pulled one of those motifs out to make this little box and also gave us the box. It's just a paper mache type box from Hobby Lobby. So uh, I won't pull that out to show you. This is one that I'm very anxious to start. I love the border on that. And what, in what I understand is typical Alma fashion, it was all wrapped up in a little plastic thing with, this is a real boxwood um, piece and tied on with the ribbon. It was a very sweet presentation. We knew about all of the speakers except one. We had a surprise visit from Lois at Lady.Creates who brought us this project. It's a little black velvet pumpkin. She gave us all that we need to put this together except the stuffing. The black velvet, the ribbon, the pumpkin stem, which she um, said she bought on Etsy and some beautiful pins to go in it. She was so fun. I've never met her before either. And she just, she was just such a fun speaker. They all were, honestly. Um, Chessie and Me was another speaker 
and she just gave us several things, y'all. Um, this is the pattern, first of all, that Linda designed for us. And it's a huswife. That's the outside piece of it. And this is the inside of it. She brought some floss for us to make the cording. So we, I did that. She had a little cord twister. I have one here, but it was fun to do it there with her. These are the threads that she put on this little card for us. So look at those sweet colors. And there's wool. Um, like this. And, whoops, I'm dropping things over here, y'all. And the fabric. And this fabric is, hmm, let's see if I can tell you what the fabric is. No, it's inside there somewhere, so I'm not going to open that up unless somebody's just dying to know that. In addition to that, she also... Um, I'm going to figure out where I am. Um, oh, no. Nope. I'm sorry for the confusion, y'all, but honestly, there was so much. I'm going to show you Kathy Barracks. Um, Kathy brought us this pattern I absolutely love it she had both models this one was my favorite and I don't typically love the ones on dark fabric but I loved that one she also <laughs> let me show you how the threads for that how she did that look at that put them on this with a little hand And gave us the pattern for a wool hand like these in this pattern. And a pattern for a paper one as well. And This is a little tag with the ribbon that you can tie onto it. It just goes on and on. This is a label. And this is more wool for the hand. And scissors and a box cutter and a ruler to help us make that and get it all turned beautifully. There were a couple of people who actually made the wool hands while they were there. I did not. I don't multitask well anymore. There's a gnat flying around me, driving me crazy. And Teresa Cogut. You know, I met Teresa in Tulsa some time ago. Precious, sweet, sweet lady. Summer before last, I guess. And it has been absolutely fascinating to watch her growth as a cross-stitch designer from when she first began to this point. Now, all of these things that I've shown you were beautiful. I loved every one of them. I, I was, um, and you know, you don't always love every one, but I did love every one of these. If I had to pick a favorite, 
<coughs> excuse me, it would be this one. The model of this blew me away. It's not as easy to tell from the picture. The colors are so rich. They are DMC's and Weeks Dye Works threads. This one will be the first one that I start when I get all of this put away. It will be the first one, and it will be soon. I told y'all earlier I'm down to 22 whips. Well, you know, since I've watched a few videos between now and the uh, last video, I've seen several people who had 50, even 200. I'm just going to start everything and enjoy the time that I have. I, I think I told y'all that last time. I repeat myself. But this one, 221 by 156, it's, it's stitch dense. That's what I call it. It's not terribly big, but it is stitch dense. So there's a lot of stitching in that. The fabric for it is this piece right here. So that's how big it's going to be. This is a 40 count vintage country mocha. And the threads are all in here. I do not have these on floss cards yet. So there, there you have it. <laughs> but they're beautiful. Take my word for it. I don't want to get them out and get one of them lost. She also gave us this label and this needle minder and this small pattern that came off of the big one and a sticker for our calendars. A little sticker. Oh, see, I dropped it. I told y'all, I have to, and it went right up underneath this sewing machine cabinet, so I'll have to get on my hands and knees to dig that out, and all of that came in this beautiful box to store it in, perfection, so thank you to all the designers who did such a wonderful job. Now, let's talk a little about people and who were there. I met, I told you about seeing old friends, but I met several new friends that are going to be part of my life um, for years to come. Um, one old friend that I had never met before, but I feel like she was an old friend, was Olivia B., Olivia and Elena, I adore both of them. Elena is not making videos anymore, so shame on you, Elena. <clears throat> Olivia made me this project bag. Look at this. These are Blackbird Design fabrics. Look at that. How thoughtful. Ah, I love it treasure. I will treasure this. And y'all, this is filled with all of the things that people gave me. And I can't, I can't show them all to you. There are buttons and pins and floss cards, Pam and Steph. So sweet. When I saw Steph, she gave me some floss cards. And the next day I walked by and, and uh, to say hi to Pam, and she gave me more, and I said, no, 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 Steph's already given me some. She said, that's okay. You can have more. <laughs> These are pictures of them when they were kids. So I got floss cards from several people, um, and several, um, what are these called? Floss tags. Um, this one is a vintage patriotic, if you can see it. Um, Judy Pennington made that, and this one, I hope I don't miss anybody, y'all, I don't want to, um, Roxanne and Shirley 
I adore that. A needle minder from um, Felicia, who is Ozark Mountain Stitcher. Is that right? Yeah, Ozark Mountain Stitcher. Um, Quilter Station gave us all a pair of scissors. And look at mine are these little sheep ones. I've seen these many times. I, I got this, and I don't know who gave it to me. It's another little needle minder. I, there are several things in here, y'all. I would leave my table and come back, and these things would be here, and I don't know who gave them to me, so I'm sorry. Look at this precious Halloween one. The cat. Look at the cat. Oh, you cat people are going to be jealous of that one. More floss cards. These are from uh, Roberta. I don't know if it's Roberta or Roberta and Lenny. Uh, oh, this is, says Roberta. Because Lenny gave us something else. And this has a little charm down in it as well. I want to show you what Lenny gave us. If you don't watch the Sable Stitchers, you really should. Lenny um, made us this little needle book. It's wool. Um, and she, on her latest floss tube she tells the story of these she there were 150 of us y'all and we all got one and this wool came from her sister's stash who uh, is no longer with us so take a kleenex with you to hear that one oh <laughs> stitch and scotty gave us a sticker um laura hines had these adorable floss cards. Quilter Station also gave us the little um, two inch measure, three inch measure, and I have a stack of those. Uh, Sharon Pack was making these little floss tags. Um, Sandra Potter. Gave us the sticker and a little, what I call a mascara wand, but for getting the stray threads off your fabric. Those are wonderful. And there was another one of those that showed up at my table with no name. Uh, so I don't know who that came from. Um, Kay, my friend Kay Dunlap. Look at this. Her bunny butt, she called it. <laughs> so cute. Colette. Highway Stitcher. I got stickers from her. And candy showed up all the time. I don't know who this one came from either. But it's got this sweet little floss tag that has DMC on it. The little white letters all have DMC on them. And it has a card in it. It's a little notebook actually, not a card. It says, Life is so much better. When you're laughing and it has candy which i didn't know i left in there i thought i'd pulled all the candy out which i'll do right now because it's almost time for a snack and there's also uh, a needle threader in here and then my friend kathy who was so sweet and so kind and generous um she had a basket that i loved and she went out and found me one on ebay um which I don't have yet, but she's going to send it to me. Um, she made these little blocks. This is Mod Podge on there, I think. There's a hole in here where you can put a pair of scissors. Where did I lay those scissors? Uh, things get, well, here. Here's a little pair that I keep on my sewing machine. A small pair of scissors would stay in that like that. This is so pretty. And this little pumpkin going with my fall decorations and a needle binder and this is a lip balm. And on top of it was this little clip-on leaf <laughs> packaged in this little box. You know, I, people are so thoughtful and giving and 
Honestly, I just, I'm not good at thinking ahead. Did I show you this one, this little one that has Noel on it? I don't know where that came from either. Anyway, I hope that I didn't miss anything. I hope that I made it uh, home with everything. And um, I did buy a couple of patterns, which I will show you. Um, first of all, I didn't have this Teresa Cogut one, and I, she had the model for that there. Oh my goodness, that was so pretty. So that will be a summer stitch for me. Um, and then a Kathy Barrick one called a Miniature Quaker Sampler. I have seen Liz Matthews trees many times, um, but to see them in person was amazing. So I might have bought a few of her 12 Days of Christmas. She doesn't have all 12 days done, um, but I bought the first day, the second day. Is that the second day? Yes, second day. I have them in order. The third day, the fourth day, the fifth day, and the sixth day. Those are not real big, y'all. I'm thinking that's going to be a great Christmas stitching time. They are only 97 by 132. I think they're all that exact same size. And then a couple of others that I bought. Um, Stella's Sleigh Ride, Jesse and Me, and Sarah Casey Unwin, Jesse and Me. Okay, I think that's it. This is longer than I typically do, so. Uh, I hope that's okay with y'all, and um, if you hung in there with me, I want to say thank you very much. I'm not going to do a giveaway today because, honestly, I don't know where I'm going to be in the next couple of weeks and how quickly I could get things mailed out. But the next one, next video that I make, I've got several patterns that I've either stitched or I'm not going to stitch that I'm going to give away, so be sure you come back. The two that I tried to give away last time... Uh, neither uh, contacted me. Um, I'm going to give you one more chance on this um, in the next, let's say, two weeks from today. If I have not heard from Nancy Summer, then this pattern is going to be given to the next person who commented on that. And Diane Knowles, same thing, two weeks from today. I'm going to pass this on down the line to the next person who asks for that pattern. Okay. I think that's it. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the week. Um, that your fall is cooler than mine, but not too cold. And that you get to stitch all the things. Love you all. Bye-bye.